How's it going guys, Luke here from 4Gamers, and today I'm going to be showing you all how to make a working DJ booth in Minecraft 1.11. In this video, I'll be showing you the basics of making a simple DJ booth that actually plays music, along with a short, more advanced tutorial on how to add cool effects such as flashing lights and music notes. If you want your very own DJ booth, but don't have the time to build it, be sure to check out the structure block download in the description below. Also, if you haven't seen my working dance floor video, be sure to check it out here. Without further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, I thought I'd give you a bit of a preview of the finished product. This is what it'll look like after we've added the effects in the advanced tutorial. Anyway, on with the video. Alright, so to start off, we're going to lay down a base layer to make a platform for the DJ booth. Next, we're going to lay down three jukeboxes in front to play the music and out note blocks on the sides for decoration. Then. We're going to extend the back of the platform so we can make a little nook for the DJ to stand in. We're also going to throw down an extra jukebox on the side, and I'll explain why later. After that, take coal blocks and stack them on the sides. Next, place item frames on the front sides of the coal blocks. Adding firework stars in the item frames will make them look like actual speakers. After that, add buttons on the back sides of the jukeboxes. You may have to crouch and click to place them. Next, we'll need to remove a bit of the platform, so we can add the redstone that makes the DJ booth work. Now that the basic structure of the DJ booth is finished, we'll need to add command blocks to make it work. Before we even place the command blocks, we're going to update the game rule for command block output to false, so that when we activate the command blocks, our chat isn't flooded with updating commands. Underneath each jukebox, place one impulse command block, making sure that the arrows on the sides are pointing down. You'll need to crouch to place them on the jukeboxes. After that, while crouching, place a chain command block underneath each of the front three impulse command blocks. In the impulse command blocks, you'll want to add the slash stop sound command. This will stop any current music playing so you don't play more than one record at a time. In the chain command blocks, you'll want to add the slash play sound commands. For each command block, you can play a different record. In this case, I'm playing Strad, Style, and Cat. When you press each button, first, the Impulse command block will stop any music playing and the Chain command block will start playing a new track. The jukebox on the side will stop any music playing without beginning a new song. Once you're done, you can cover up the command blocks and you're all finished. That's it for the basic tutorial, now let's crank it up a notch. Before we do any more redstone, we're going to use iron bars and blocks to build a scaffolding for our light show. When the redstone is done, we'll have flashing lights on the front of the iron blocks. Rather than building this piece by piece, I'm going to show you the finished redstone and walk you through it. As I go through it, you can pause the video to copy commands and layouts. If it looks too complex, that's okay, there will be a structure download in the description below. You can skip ahead and see how to install structures into your world. When we're finished, the DJ booth will have flashing lights and music pumping out of the speakers. Pressing the button on the side will stop the music and turn off the light show. In the chain command block below, there is a command that will act as a T-switch, making an impulse turn into a switch, switching the light show on and off. Over here, right-clicking a comparator while feeding redstone back into it will create a redstone clock. In the two command blocks here, we have particle effects that will animate the notes coming from the speakers. The first three numbers in the command correspond to the coordinates of the speakers. Over here, in the three lanes, we have the animations for the three flashing lights on the DJ booth. They work simply by setting stained glass at the coordinates in front of the iron blocks. To find your coordinates, just press F3 and look in the top left corner of your screen. In each lane, the coordinates are the same, but the color of the stained glass changes. The value at the end of the command changes the color. 
In the next lane, the coordinates shift by one count, and different stained glasses are used. The last lane shifts over one more coordinate, and the colors of the stained glass are also different. To finish the effect, the redstone current is inverted, so that when the light show is on, the gray lane is off. Once the button is pressed, these command blocks get powered, and all three place gray stained glass so that it looks like the lights are off. Here's a quick overhead view of the redstone circuitry. And that's it. That's all it takes to make a rockin' DJ booth in Minecraft. If you want to install this into your world, stay tuned for the structure block tutorial. Alright, to install this into your world, you're going to need to go to your C drive and look up .minecraft. Once it's loaded your results, go to the .minecraft folder listed under App Data. Next, go to Saves, and then select the world you want to install the DJ booth into. Then go to Structures and drop the DJ booth file there. You can find the file download in the description below. To install the structure, give yourself a structure block using slash give at player structure underscore block. Place it, then toggle over to the load setting and type in the structure name DJ Booth. Make sure to click Include Entities On, and then Load. If you're happy with the placement of the DJ booth, then press the Load button again, and you're done. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and also leave a comment below with any ideas and suggestions for the next Redstone tutorial. Until next time, I'm Luke from 4Gamers, signing off.